This is Europa. Um, Carolyn Porco mentioned another one called Enceladus the other day. This is one of the places where planetary scientists believe there is a highest probability of the detection of the first life off Earth in the ocean that exists below there. For those who have never seen this story, uh, Jim Cameron produced a really wonderful IMAX movie a couple years ago uh, called Aliens of the Deep. There was a brief clip. We got some sound we're missing. A mission to explore under the ice of Europa would be the ultimate Crank robotic challenge. Europa is so far away that even at the speed of light, it would take more than an hour for the command just to reach the vehicle. It has to be smart enough to avoid terrain hazards and to find a good landing site on the ice. You need a milk probe. It's basically a nuclear heated torpedo. The ice could be anywhere from 3 to 16 miles deep. Week after week, the milk probe will sink of its own weight through the ancient ice until finally. What are you going to do when you reach the surface of that ocean? You need an AUV, an autonomous underwater vehicle. It needs to be one smart puppy able to navigate and make decisions on its own in an alien ocean. What Jim didn't know when he released that movie was that six months earlier, NASA had funded a team I assembled to develop a prototype for the Europa AUV. I'm going to cut through three years of engineering meetings, design and system integration, and introduced DepthX, Deep Phreatic Thermal Explorer. And uh, as the movie says, this is one smart puppy. It's got 96 sensors, 36 onboard computers, 100,000 lines of behavioral autonomy code, packs more than 10 kilos of TNT and electrical onboard equivalent. This is the target site, the world's deepest hydrothermal spring at Cenote Zacatona in northern Mexico. It's been explored to a depth of 292 meters and beyond that, nobody knows anything. This is part of DepthX's mission. There's two primary targets we're doing here. One is, how do you do science autonomy underground? How do you take a robot and turn it into a field microbiologist? There's more stages involved here than I've got time to tell you about, but basically we drive through the space we populate it with environmental variables, sulfide, halide, things like that. We calculate gradient surfaces and drive the bot over to a wall where there's a high probability of life. We move along the wall in what's called proximity operations, looking for changes in color. If we see something that looks interesting, we pull it into a microscope. If it passes the microscopic test, we go for a collection. We either draw in a liquid sample or we can actually take a solid core uh, from the wall. No hands at the wheel. This is all behavioral autonomy here that's being conducted by the robot on its own. The real hat trick for this vehicle, though, is a disruptive new navigation system we've developed known as 3D SLAM for simultaneous localization and mapping. DepthX is an all-seeing eyeball. Its sensor beams look both forward and backward at the same time, allowing it to do new exploration while it's still achieving geometric sensor lock on what it's gone through already. What I'm going to show you next is the first fully autonomous robotic exploration underground that's ever been done. This May, uh, we're going to go for minus 1,000 meters in Zocatone, and if we are very lucky, DepthX will bring back the first robotically discovered division of bacteria. The next step after that is to test it in Antarctica, and then if the funding continues 
and NASA has the resolution to go, we could potentially launch by 2016, and by 2019 we may have the first evidence of life off this planet. 